Hello and welcome to this Christmas special of Seven Days of Science. What's so special about it? I don't know, it's just the closest Seven Days of Science to Christmas, I guess. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, the colossal Antarctic iceberg, called A68A, split into three main pieces as it continues its journey in the South Atlantic Ocean, recently passing the island of South Georgia. However, it still maintains a size large enough to be caught in the waters around the island, which could pose a threat to penguins and seals as they fish for food, just as they enter peak breeding season. This breakup is not unexpected, in fact it had been predicted to happen months ago, and there's still a long way to go in this massive iceberg's lifespan. Despite the warming climate of the planet, it's believed that A68A actually has very little to do with global warming, as it comes from a part of the Antarctic which is still rather cold, so this iceberg's journey is relatively standard. Also this week is the great news that a species of prehistoric conifer has been named after Dr. Ellie Sattler from Jurassic Park. Discovered in the Lower Cretaceous Crato Formation of Brazil, this new species, Brachyphelum sattlerae, shows many distinct morphologies, indicating this is a new taxon, and the authors very aptly decided to name it after the brilliant paleobotanist Dr. Sattler, a nice tribute to a great character. And now over to Ben, with a very special Christmas message. Thanks, Doug. Also in the exciting paleontology news this week is a paper that describes an incredible fossil of an oviraptorid sitting on top of its clutch of eggs. Although amazing fossils like this have been discovered before, what makes this one stand out is the fact that the embryos of the young dinosaurs are still preserved within the eggs. Not only does this add support to the hypothesis that oviraptorids would brood, but the fact that the embryos are all at different stages of development suggests they hatched asynchronously, which is actually a pretty derived feature even among living birds showing how the evolution of reproductive biology along birdline archosaurs was a highly complex process, instead of linear and incremental. Next is the publication of a new genus and species of titanosaur from France, Garagatitan meridionalis. Found in Upper Cretaceous rocks, this was a small to medium-sized sauropod, with the fossils currently known, which likely belonged to subadults, indicating an animal reaching about 4 to 6 meters in length. However, it's possible that larger titanosaur fossils found at the same locality could be from adult Garegotitan individuals about 12 meters long. This new taxon therefore increases the known diversity of late Cretaceous titanosaurs from this locality, which during the Cretaceous would have been on an island. And finally for this week is an absolutely amazing paper that describes a frozen prehistoric wolf pup discovered in Yukon, Canada. Named Zhe, which means wolf in the Han language, the specimen was found in July of 2016 along a small tributary as the permafrost it was buried in melted. Zhe is the most complete mummified wolf currently known, and lived about 57,000 years ago, seeming to have died and been so well preserved when her den collapsed on her at about 7 weeks old. It was discovered that, surprisingly, her mother had mostly been feeding on aquatic resources such as salmon, and the evolutionary relationships of this ancient wolf to modern ones have also been established finding that her clade is basal to all living grey wolves. So, another absolutely astonishing discovery from the permafrost. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on Friday for our Christmas special. <laughs>